Hello, and welcome to another bowling game kata. This time we'll be walking through the kata in JavaScript. Now, a lot of times in the industry you see JavaScript as just sort of uh, mixed in with your HTML and just uh, some little script snippets here and there. But we know that JavaScript is code like any other, and it can be very powerful code. And so to keep our applications clean and maintainable, we still want to organize that code and, of course, test it like any other. So we'll be using the Jasmine uh, test library, which is available on NuGet. What we see here is the only page in our solution, uh, the test runner page, which is just some boilerplate Jasmine code. We bring in the libraries there, bring in the object we're testing, the tests that we're running, and then some basic Jasmine stuff to get us started, set up the environment, uh, add an HTML reporter so that we're just going to output the results of the page, and of course execute the tests. We can take a look at those now. Since there are no tests, there's nothing outputted to the page. We can see that our bowling game object is empty, and our tests are empty, except for these little references that help with the Visual Studio IntelliSense. So let's start off by creating our first test. First we're going to describe our set of tests very simply as the bowling game. Now in that set of tests we can start creating some tests. This one will be can create game. Which quite simply creates a game. Now you'll notice the IntelliSense doesn't show us anything because there's nothing to show. And if we run the test, it fails as expected because bowling game is undefined. So let's go over here and define it. For now, it doesn't need to do anything, just make it a function. And the test passes. So let's go back to our tests. Nothing to refactor. Let's move on to the next test. Can roll gutter game. Again, we'll need a game. And we see that this can use some refactoring. We've got some repeated code, but we'll get to that at the right time. And a gutter game is 20 rolls of zero pins. Uh, we see roll is not defined. And then we expect the score, which is also not defined, to be zero. This test will fail because these things are not defined, so let's define them. I think what we're going to do here is prototype these. This doesn't need to do anything yet. is function and this one can just return zero. Now those tests pass, we can roll a gutter game. Let's go back here, we see some refactoring. Actually we don't need this original test at all, so we just get rid of it. And now we know we'll want to refactor some of this later, but we're not there yet. So let's move on to our next test which I believe was can roll all ones. We expect that score to be 20, which will of course fail, because it's only returning zero. So how do we get that test to pass? Well, let's see, we need to 
store the rolls somewhere. So I guess what we could do is inside the bowling game object define rolls as an array. In the role function we can push onto that, that array and then in the score function we'll just iterate through that array. Passes. Let's see if there's any refactoring to do here. I think this is pretty good. Uh, here we can refactor some of this. Let's define a uh, higher scoped game variable and say before each test. Game is a new bowling game. So now we don't need game defined there anymore. Test still pass. And we can refactor these loops. Uh, let's see. Let's say roll many is a function with pins and rolls. Now here we can say roll many zero pins 20 times and here we roll many one pin 20 times. Still passes. Alright, so I think that's all the refactoring for that. Let's move on to the next test. Can roll a spare. First, we want to roll five, then another five, and then let's roll a three, and then roll many zero pins. There are 17 rolls left in the game. And we expect that score to be, let's see, they've got the 10 for that frame, plus three for that frame plus the bonus three, so it should be 16 total. And we got 13, so we need to make that test pass. Let's see. Well, we've done this before. We know that we want to go through this frame by frame instead of roll by roll. So we're going to have to back out this test, get us back to a working state, or rather a passing state, and do that refactoring. So let's see, we've got our results, we can still work on that. Uh, we want a roll index. Then we want to loop through, we're going to give this a better name, frame index. And frame index goes through 10 frames. And this is going to be roll index plus this dot rolls of roll index plus one. And we will increment roll index by two. So what this will do is go through the 10 frames and give us the two rolls in each frame. That still works. So now let's go back here and Go back to that test, still fails. So let's make that test pass. So now for any given frame, we want to check if it is a spare. So if these two things equal 10,
then the result is more than just those two rolls. It is an additional roll. Test pass. All right. Let's see. We know we can get into some refactoring here. Uh, this is this logic is starting to get a little obtuse. We've got all these rolls of this plus rolls of this plus rolls of that. So let's extract some of these. I don't think the tests itself need any refactoring. So let's just focus our refactoring here. We want to create some, I guess, helper methods uh, pretty much inside of this score function. So let's see, if we create one called uh, is spare. And we need to access the game. Let's capture that game. So we can just refer to game here. And we want to say return this. Instead of this, we're going to say game. And then in here, we can just say if is spare. Let's see if that works. That does still work, so let's continue with that pattern. Say get spare score. And that's going to return this calculation right here. But instead of this, we refer to game. And then we want to get normal score. Oh, sorry. Mistyped that. Get normal score. Still passes. All right, that's a little cleaner. Now it reads a little more like prose. If it's a spare, get the spare score, or else get the normal score. So let's move on to the next test. Can roll a strike. This time we roll a 10. That's our whole first frame. Then our second frame will be a couple of rolls that don't add up to anything special. Since our first frame was only one roll, the remaining ones are 16. And we expect the score to be, let's see, 10 for the first frame, plus 7 bonus for the first frame, plus 7 for the second frame is 24. That fails. Got not a number instead of 24. I believe that's a, uh, that not a number is because we're probably exceeding the bounds of the array here. We'll probably want to put in some checking at some point, make this a little more robust, but for now we just need the tests to pass. So let's see, we need to continue this pattern of is if it's a strike and get the strike score. So, let's add those. In fact, get strike score and get spare score are coincidentally identical because with a spare, you get these two for the frame plus one bonus. And for the strike, you get this one for the frame plus two bonuses. If is strike, result 
plus equals get strike score. And now roll index only increments by one, whereas here it increments by two in both of those. Tests pass. Uh, this is pretty clean. I don't see any refactoring that we need to do. Let's move on to the last test. Can roll a perfect game. Oops. This one's simple. We roll many. 10 pins 12 times. It's one for each frame plus the two bonuses in the last frame. And we expect the score to be 300. And that passes. Nothing to refactor, nothing to add or change. We know that we can probably clean this up a little bit, maybe put in some array bounds checking, things like that. Uh, if we ever want to use this, for example, to generate the score on an incomplete game, we would need to check the bounds of the array. But first we would need to write the tests for that. But that's, that's it for the bowling game test-driven development kata. Thanks for watching.